Hi guys, we are here at Anderson Pens. And I have here with me today the Lisa Anderson herself. Yep. Hi Lisa. How are you? Quite well. And yourself? I am good. Excellent. Today we're apparently going to be talking about pens for small hands. And yes. Lisa has selected five? Sort of. Pens for small hands? <laughs> I do not know what they are. However, I'm going to guess that one of them is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. Okay. All right. What um, else? Anything else? That's your only guess? A Kaveco Skyline and maybe a Shalana. Okay. Uh oh, so I'm off base. <laughs> <laughs> So, pen number one. Dun, dun, dun. The Estherbrook JR in the uh, Key Lime. I really love the color. I love the accent of purple. Um, I love the way that Estherbrook has brought back the brand. Um, but for me, the ST is just a little too big. And it doesn't post as well as the JR. And for me, posting is a deal breaker. You are, you are a well. poster. I am a poster, which is different than a poser. <laughs> <laughs> so I love how it fits in my hand. Um, it's thin. It's a little shorter with the cap. Posted, it's definitely longer. So even for bigger hands, that would work. Um, I love the colors. The nib is just a great Yovo steel nib. Um, so this, I, I love this in the Key Lime. I also personally have the Fantasia, which was uh, a while back, that blue sparkly, sparkly one. one. So I have that. Uh, so that is pen number one. Pen number one. Which you did not Not at guess. all on my list. Okay. Nope, not even on my radar. Okay. <sighs> pen number option. two. I'll throw you a bone. Oh, thank goodness. Sailor Pro Gear <laughs> Slim. Woo. And it really doesn't matter what color. I love this size. Um, 14 karat nib is amazing. Medium fine is my preferred um, nib size, but I can do a medium. Uh, I can do a fine. I just have to think about it a little more. I love the size. Um, the Pro Gear, I do have a few of um, in that size, and those are perfectly fine for me, but for my hand, I just find that the Pro Gear Slim is more comfortable. Um, I love that it uh, is a screw cap. I do like that in a pen. And um, this one is the new, I haven't even seen this one yet. Which oh, one is this? Storm Over the Ocean. That is, the, yeah. It's like the color of a yes. like, ominous weather really, really system pretty. coming towards your bohaha. Now I'm scared. <laughs> um, so I like the size. This is, um, if I get to choose, this is the size that I'm going to go with. And I do, I don't know why, but I prefer the flat top to the um, cigar shaped. So I, given a choice, I will always choose the Pro Gear Slim over the 1911. Interesting. Interesting. I'm, yeah. I'm a, a tapered ends gal myself, but oh. so, so I picked to have a slight preference for the 1911, but I just love that, that size, like whether it's a slim or it, that would be the same size section as a pro gear or a, a 1911, 1911 standard. standard. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the one that fits better in my hand too. And so if you like the 1911 and I like the pro gear, we never have to share that works. Perfect. Yes. All right. Pen number, how many am I allowed? <laughs> uh oh. Um, pen number three. Three. Right? One, two, three. Mm -hmm. The Kaweco Lily Put. Um, oh, that's a good choice. <laughs> Ta da! Um, super thin, uh, almost bordering on too thin, but for a small hand, if you want, a metal pen, this is a great option. I do really, really like that the cap screws on to post, um, which yeah, takes yeah, a second that. to get lined up, just right for me, because I'm clumsy. But I, I just really like it. It's not heavy. Um, it is definitely thinner in the hand, but it's long enough that it doesn't um, make you feel like it's too short. Yeah, it just has to be long enough to sit in that first web space. 
Nice. <laughs> Very nice. So this would be pen number three. Oh, I got a green thing going on apparently. Ooh. All right. With with some purple accents. Oh, look like at color, color. I didn't color choose that on purpose. Mm -hmm. All right, pen number four. This number one's for four. Philip. Oh. The Twisby Eco. Um, and in rose gold. In the rose gold. I love the rose gold. I did not have a Twisby Eco for many, many years because, <laughs> and I tell Philip from Twisby this all the time, I don't like clear pens because I'm going to feel like I constantly have to fill it and keep it filled. And I don't like pistons because I'm lazy about cleaning my pens. <laughs> but when they came out with the jade, I had to do it. I just loved the color. And so now I fear I am going to have to go back and revisit all the Twisby colors because they're like potato chips and you can't have just one. Oh, um, so I forgot that that has a rose gold yes, mid too. Mm. Yes, yeah, so absolutely that gorgeous. Is... I love the size. Um, it does post, which is important to me. Um, it almost is, it can almost be too long uh, in my personal hand, but it fits, it stays, makes me happy. Um, it does hold a ton of ink. They are not difficult to clean. I'm just really lazy about it. So I just don't want to spend a lot of time cleaning. I want to spend more time playing with my pens. So that would be pen number four. And of course, it's such a great value um, that it just makes buying more than one easy. I know, Plus, a whole collection is in my future. I definitely need the glow in the dark. Yeah, that's that's a really cool one. All right, what is that for? That is four. Pen number five. Pen number five, is it the last pen or no? No. Okay. <laughs> so this one, you know, pen number five would have been the Pilot Vanishing Point Decimo, but I forgot about it. I have two. I was going to say, I, I can't believe I didn't guess that. But I went with Ooh. the new, the Heritage, the Pilot Custom Heritage SE. And so it's because of the material. Yeah. You know, the vanishing points are great. They are, I know, do you want to, it's, it's like mesmerizing. I'm hypnotized. They are, uh, vanishing points are great. They're convenient. They're really an interesting engineering marvel. But I got to tell you, this also, and for the Decimo, it's a good fit in my hand. Mm -hmm. But this, when we got these in, I spent a lot of time over the past couple of weeks just playing with these. And it's a good size, very similar to the Custom 74, but it's a lot prettier than the Custom 74. Yeah, so that. So I really like this. Uh, rhodium plated gold nib, great, great writer. You know, your typical pilot pen is just a not, it's a no-brainer. Out of the box, they just write like they should. Um, and the colors are just gorgeous. Now, if I remember from the podcast, is it the orange that is Eric's favorite? I do believe I so. Be. I believe this is this is the color. All right. And I can see why. It looks like fire. Yes. And so the new Vanishing Point SE is also going to come in similar colors. Oh, just yeah. like the, yeah. I wonder if having an acrylic body instead of normally they have brass bodies. I wonder if that'll make it a little lighter. As a vanishing point. I'm assuming it's over brass. Oh. I don't think that they would make it. I, I don't know. Yeah. We haven't gotten them in yet, so we'll, we'll see. To... We could be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's over brass because that would make sense. You've got that that mechanism pushing. Yeah, wait, but we'll totally this change the whole pretty, design. Oh my god. So. The Heritage SE is my number five pen, and because I don't like to be limited, this is my favorite non-fountain pen, pen, across Wanderlust. Oh, good choice. Yes. Um, we both have these. Yes. The joke with Brian and I is that when our sales rep came to visit me several years ago in Chicago, I fell in love because it doesn't look like your typical cross very conservative pen. The colors are gorgeous. It's got some bling, which Cross doesn't do very often. So this was definitely like a step out of their comfort zone and right into mine. Um, the rose gold That's trim such is- such an elegant step out of that yes, comfort zone yes. too. The pearl white base, the, the bling, the colors, everything about it. And, oh, I picked a fountain pen. I like the roller ball. <laughs> um, just really like the size. It's a good size. It's a good weight. So this one's the fountain pen. It does post. 
Um, there's really nothing about it that I don't like. And so I grabbed a fountain pen, but I meant to grab the roller. That is my five and a half favorite five. pens for small hands. Fabulous. Fabulous. So anything that tweaks your interest? Oh, I just, I can never stop staring at these wanderlusts. I do, I like that the section on these guys is a little, is thinner. I have a ballpoint, so I so I don't usually get to, to hold these. But oh, this the roller is, ball's great. Yeah, it's got a nice texture to it. Yep. Oh, I so love. there you go. Love that pen. All right, so we're going to go shopping. All right. Excellent. So... I guess that's it. Those are my top five recommendations with an extra and extra commentary on the decimo. So does that make it seven or is that still five? Well, we'll say it's five. Your name's on the door. <laughs> okay. It's a bonus. Yeah. There you go. So. All right. This has been Lisa's top five fountain pens for small hands. Excellent. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more talk about pens, papers, and inks. There we go.